Hello, my name is Gary Roberge and I'm the Executive Director of the Judicial Branch's Court Support Services Division and I'm here to talk with you about an exciting initiative that we have been working on with the Council of Juvenile Correctional Administrators and Georgetown University's Center for Juvenile Justice Reform called the Youth in Custody Practice Model. This is a very exciting project for us, especially in light of the recent transfer of services from the Department of Children and Family to the Judicial Branch. We've been working with our partners to identify gaps in services that we may have in our current juvenile justice system, planning enhancements to the gaps that we identify, and then ultimately assisting us in implementing changes to our juvenile justice system to benefit the kids that we're here to serve. Some of the areas that we have focused on to date include facility environment, staff wellness, family engagement, elevating youth voice, and education and structured programming in our facilities. This video is intended to summarize the innovative changes the Connecticut Judicial Branch has made to the work that we do based upon the youth in custody practice model meetings that we've had to date. You will hear from Judicial Branch staff and our contracted service providers from various disciplines about how this practice model has helped them elevate their professionalism, how we work with our kids and the services that we provide. I hope that you find this video informing and that it really highlights the exceptional work that our staff do each and every day with youth that we serve here in Connecticut. Thank you. So I began working for uh, juvenile uh, facilities in 1995. Uh, as a ju juvenile detention officer and currently I'm a juvenile probation officer. As a juvenile probation officer, whenever I go into court and suggest or recommend to the court about a kid being detained, it's a major impact on their life. Um, despite how challenging their home may be, um, that's a significant moment in that youth's life. And we as an agency have an obligation to make sure that when kids enter our facilities, we are providing the best medical, mental health, and just general living conditions that we can provide for our youth. Um, making them feel like their life isn't over or making them feel like uh, no one has given up on them is important because detention should be utilized as a building block of change in trying to get that youth to improve their behavior. So we as a state, looking at how we treat our youth in our detention facilities is a really important aspect of how we as a juvenile court function in the state of Connecticut. Hi, my name is Diana Sidlick and I am an advanced practice nurse uh, and have been providing the, as part of a team, the healthcare quality improvement for juvenile residential services for about 10 years. Being very familiar with the accrediting bodies such as NCCHC, um, ACA, I really enjoyed and learned a lot by participating in the Youth in Custody Practice Model. Good morning, my name is uh, Ramon Rosado. I'm a Deputy Superintendent here at the Hartford Juvenile Detention Center uh, on the first shift. I'm here with... Um, Kim Ellsworth, I am the Acting Program and Services Supervisor here at Hartford Detention. We encourage kids to give input uh, in order to give their uh, place uh, changes in the facility add more color to their rooms on the unit, more murals in the facility, um, allow them to give feedback, whether it's with their uniform, uh, asking for pillows, and all those items have been provided. Um, I think too, the YICPM has assisted us in um, additional support with the kids. Um, for many years, um, there were people involved in their lives that were positive supports for them but because of the way our policies were written, we couldn't allow them to come in to visit the kids. And um, we've had some policy changes to adjust that, and we now have a positive supporter that is allowed to come in. Um, and oftentimes that positive supporter is someone that previously wasn't covered by our old policy, so the kids are able to have that person in their life while they're here in detention. And I think other changes that are coming our way is that we do have a mural in the school hallway, and the gentleman that did that mural has been contracted to do a welcome mural in our processing area to make it a little more friendly when the kids come in. Um, 
and in our regions unit we'll be doing a mural that he's going to work with the kids on designing and get their voice and their input on um, to make it a more comfortable environment for the kids. We also have a juvenile on Regents who's a good artist. I'm going to allow him to draw something on the wall and paint it himself, uh, allow the other juveniles to, to provide the support as well. And I think the YICPM also has um, helped us to focus on what we do really well through the breakout groups where we sit down and we look at different areas, grade ourselves, where we're meeting those expectations, where we could show some improvement, where we're not meeting it at all. We also incorporated the restorative justice circle recently, which has been a great impact for the juveniles. Uh, we have the, the staff who uh, create a circle. We allow the juveniles to talk freely and openly about the different issues that they are encountering whether it's here, whether it's out in the community. Um, and I think having the YIC PM team to work with over this last, what's it been, a year, year and a half, um, has been great because we want to do things well, but oftentimes you need someone to talk to and say, how do we make it happen? What are other people doing or other agencies or other facilities to make this happen? So having that resource has been really helpful within our facilities as well. Hi, I'm Nicole Koval. I'm a court planner here at Central Office. And a couple of the projects that came out of the Yikum initiative is restorative justice. So we currently are working with Suffolk University and the Center for Children's Advocacy to get restorative practices within our detention facilities. And what that does is it allows equal access for youth to raise their voice and talk about some of the concerns they have in a manner where everyone is heard equally. Um, it's a great way to build community within the detention centers as well as relationship building between the staff and the kids. Another of the projects that we're working on is the Sexual Orientation, Gender Identity, and Expression Data Collection Initiative, which we call SOGI. And so nationally, um, kids in our juvenile justice population, about 20% of them are LGBT. However, Connecticut, we don't collect this information to know if we have that disparity. So we're working with an organization out from California called the Series Policy Research, and what they're doing is they're helping us get up and running on this um, data collection initiative so then we can see what our population looks like, identify if we have disparity, and then hopefully provide more services and treatment and you know, get the access that the kids might want to get referrals and those kind of things. Um, we're doing that currently in our two state detention facilities, as well as piloting the questionnaire in both our Middletown and Stanford probation offices. So that's really exciting. Hi, my name is Samuel Fonseca. I'm a classification program officer at the Bridgeport Juvenile Detention Center. I work specifically on the Regions Unit with the post-adjudicated kids. So one of the major changes that's come to the facility was a part of visitation. In the past, we only allowed for family members to visit, guardians and siblings, and now because of the youth in custody practice, we were able to make some changes where now we can identify mentors, school counselors, maybe coaches, or other additional supports to come in and visit with the juveniles on our unit. Working with the region's population, we have a multidisciplinary team that consists of the probation officer, a classification program officer, a deputy superintendent, a juvenile detention officer, psychologist, and also a clinician, and we also include the guardian. We have monthly meetings to go over the treatment goals and the progress of each juvenile on the Regents Unit. Our goal is for six months for us to come together as a team with the juvenile and try to figure out what's going to be the next step to integrate the juvenile back, in, back into their community with some support and some programming put in place that's going to help the juveniles from not returning back to the detention facility. With the help of probation, the guardian, along with the clinician and the psychologist and the team here at Bridgeport Detention, we'll put together a plan so when the juvenile is released into the community, they won't return. Whether it's in-home services, so, uh, get them a mentor, get them back into school, whether it's an alternative school or back into the regular school district, so this way they're able to be successful in life. Also, we have a work-study program so we can help the juveniles with creating a resume, helping them do mock interviews while they're here in the detention facility, and also maybe do some 
applications before they're released back into the community in the hopes that we can help them get a job once they're released. Hello, my name is Anthony LaCorey. I'm a juvenile probation supervisor in Hartford. Uh, I've been involved in this project for about a year now. I believe I was selected as I have a background in juvenile residential services as I started my career there many years ago. Uh, today I maintain constant communication with the JDOs and administration in our day-to-day -day operations and ensure we have good communication uh, with the overall goal of ensuring our kids do, do well in detention and in the community. Our staff work together, uh, CPOs, JDOs, and probation officers work together to create successful reentry and discharge plans to ensure that while the youth uh, are in the community, they're provided with services and programs that'll help them be on track uh, to achieve their goals. Uh, the judicial branch has been involved in this um, youth in custody practice model to make best efforts and improve best practices as we do things well, but we're always looking to do things better. My name is Larry O'Brien. I am the ombudsman for the detention centers and uh, a bunch of residential uh, contracted programs for the state. A typical day would be uh, when I visit a center is I have unfettered uh, access to all of the facilities um, so I can go to any area of the, of the facility, speak with any of the kids that I need to talk to. I will sometimes just take a kid aside and speak with him or her and um, elicit from them what, what, how they feel about placement in the detention center. I do quality of life uh, surveys with all of the kids and where I ask them questions of, well, how's the food, recreation, and get from them what they feel is good about the detention center and what things they feel need to be better. Generally, the last question on the survey is to elicit from the kids which staff they feel have been uh, extra helpful to them or some people that they can speak with about things and who really do try to help them out. Uh, that is documented on the form and uh, is uh, shared obviously then with the superintendent so that there can be some rec recognition for those staff members. Quite frankly, often I just get from the kids that they feel they can talk to pretty much anybody all of the staff and they feel that they're very good and they're very supportive and helpful with whatever they need. Why do I think the Youth in Custody Practice Model Project is important? It's always good to take a look at how we're doing things. This review allows us to identify areas that we're doing really well and also identify areas of improvement. Once those areas of improvement have been identified, then we can focus on that. One of the areas that we focus, one of the changes that we made due to the Youth in Custody Practice Model is staff support. We've initiated Employee of the Month where the picture of the staff and the certificate is posted in our shift change room. Uh, we've also increased the presence of the supervisors on the floor to assist staff in any way they can. Hi, I'm Juvenile Detention Officer Patrick Menard. I've been with the Bridgeport Juvenile Detention Center for eight and a half years. Uh, I've been working each and every unit uh, in different shifts, four to 12 and also eight to four. Um, with Bridgeport Detention, um, I've been here loving the kids, you know, and I just pretty much do it for the kids, uh, for the detainees that we have. I've been uh, working recently with uh, uh, the Regions Unit, which um, most of the juveniles on the unit uh, who I've been working with previously from their past admissions. Uh, attention that I pretty much give them, I come in the day to day with a new aspect of uh, trying to strive to their new goals, whether it's uh, uh, getting released from detention to another program or getting released back to the community. Uh, these juveniles, I think, have, have understood and learned um, from each and every staff, not just myself, that uh, there's a second chance and there's other, there's life beyond, you know, the juvenile system. And I was also uh, awarded the Employee of the Month Award uh, by our Center Superintendent. Keith Rico, also with the, our fellow deputies, um, you know, and pretty much just about my work ethics, you know, my compassion with other staff, you know, my understanding. And yes, uh, and as far as training, uh, with detention, uh, we've also been trained every year with our refreshers training and also individual trainings that's uh, been given to us the opportunity to train on uh, adolescent uh, behaviors, also trauma. Um, and different type of trainings on the side too to help not only 
uh, our job for workflow, but also for our mental state as uh, officers and staff members. JDO London, been a juvenile detention officer for 14 years. I've been one of the first staff to open up the unit over on Regions. Uh, what I've seen is extensive treatment, them have an opportunity to get their grades sent over from educational standpoint to their schools, them having extensive work for their classes, um, different opportunities such as um, arts and crafts, um, outside agencies coming in for music class and recreational activities. Um, I feel as though the juveniles are buying into the system. Um, it's more of a mentorship on the unit um, from the staff to the juveniles and I think that's the biggest part of them buying in. Hi, my name is Patricia Nunez and I'm the project coordinator for the Youth in Custody Practice Model here with the Connecticut Judicial Branch. We've implemented the Youth in Custody Practice Model for our post-adjudicated juveniles in our two state juvenile detention centers. The Judicial Branch now owns responsibility for programming and serving these longer term, higher risk post-adjudicated juveniles. In our two state juvenile detention centers located in Bridgeport and Hartford, we have one region's housing unit that holds up to 12 juveniles each. The youth in custody practice model has really been a tremendous asset in developing the region's programs. We've brought in several outside consultants through our youth in custody practice model, um, including areas for being gender responsive, as well as being trauma informed. One youth in custody practice model area that we've really wanted to focus on during our time with our consultants is staff support. We know that staff on the ground here working in the detention centers is an extremely stressful um, and high anxiety level position. Our juveniles come to us with lots of trauma um, during their years of developing. So we are, are working to support our staff as much as we can. Um, we're working on this uh, through a few different avenues. One, by hiring additional staff um, so that staff can um, get requested days off and can be relieved for breaks um, as their shift requires. Secondly, we've also implemented a staff um, recognition event whereby staff are given a plaque and, and they go through a small ceremony in which they're being recognized by their center administration. These staff are highlighted during um, newsletters and at our youth and custody practice model site visits. Lastly, we're supporting staff through training. We've implemented some vicarious trauma trainings during our annual in-service that all of our staff um, go through every year so that staff can feel supported and um, are exposed to various ways in which they can take care of themselves. My name is Lillian Ijama. I'm the program director uh, for education at Hafa Juvenile Detention Center. And the education program is provided by Domus Inc which is a nonprofit organization uh, based in Stanford, Connecticut. Since Domus has been here, I mean, for the past two years, we've been participating in YICPM training. I know that YIC, YICPM models support safe uh, environment and respectful environment for our students, and that kind of merged with our PBIS expectations, which we know that we reinforce the positive uh, aspects and positive behaviors that we see amongst our kids so that they are provided quality experience while they're here and figure out how to transition them back into their schools. One thing that we also talked about at the training was the special education piece, which was really big for our kids. Most of our kids, about 80% uh, of our students are special ed students. So it is very challenging to try to get the, um, the IEPs from their district. But with the training that I attended, I came back with that information and tried to uh, work with our team, the education team, to try to get the IEPs right on time. 
while they are, they are still here, we have a very transient population. And I can tell you now that uh, since that training, we get the IEPs within 24 hours. Um, we give them enough time the first day to get back to us. If not, we call and call until we get it. So we're getting it really, really quickly so that we can be efficient and effective in providing um, educational services for our special ed kids. Uh, another thing we did uh, this school year was to hire a transition specialist who uh, is responsible or going with our kids to their district, making sure their report cards from here goes back to their schools, uh, making sure that if they are going to a placement, that our report cards goes with the students to that placement. I am Judge Bernadette Conway, the Chief Administrative Judge for Juvenile Matters. It matters how we treat children and their families when they interface with the, the juvenile court system. For those children who come back into the system again and again and who progress deeper into the juvenile justice system, committing serious offenses, and particularly for that small population of children whose behaviors ultimately result in their removal from their home and placement in a secured facility, it is critically important how we treat those children. For many of them, it is the only opportunity or the last opportunity the juvenile justice system has to effectuate lasting positive change. To that end, the uh, introduction of the Youth in Custody Practice Model here in Connecticut last year couldn't have come at a more opportune time. The state had closed the Connecticut Juvenile Training School, and in July of last year, the judicial branch assumed responsibility for the first time for the adjudicated detained youth. The Judicial Branch's Court Support Service Division created a treatment-based uh, regents program. And the Youth in Custody Practice model, overarching goals around safety and family enhancement engagement, have become a cornerstone of our regents program. You cannot expect staff to come into our region's facilities uh, every day, do their job, and do their job well if they do not feel safe, supported, and valued. Equally so, you cannot expect a child who has been removed from home and placed in a secured facility to, to attain his treatment goals if the child does not feel safe, respected, and heard. The youth in custody practice model gives us a path forward and has assisted us in creating policies and practices and procedures that ensure safety. The other art overarching goal that we have embedded into the region's program is the importance of family. All children need family, and the children who are in our region's program are no different. And so family becomes the forefront of all the treatment and the planning that we do with the region-involved children. I would like to take the opportunity at this point to uh, thank the CSSD leadership for their uh, initiative in bringing the Youth in Custody Practice Model here to Connecticut. I believe it has been incredibly beneficial as we have created our Regions Program and we continue to work and roll out our Regions Program. I am confident that the children and the family that are served in our Regions Program will continue to benefit from our use of the Youth in Custody Practice Model here in Connecticut.